So, my friends, thank you for being with us for the uh, high point of our, of our um, summit. And this is the, uh, this session now, which we will talk about co-creation. And I would like to have the honor and the pleasure to introduce a friend, Arnaud Moreau, who is part of our advisory network, the Zermatt Summit, and who is head of Ashoka Europe. And Ashoka Europe is in the Ashoka planet one of the most innovative, if not the most innovative, a lot of, of ideas come from, from us, uh, from Europe. And so I uh, welcome also all the social entrepreneurs and uh, we are getting everybody back in the room to listen to you because this is very important for us. Arno, you have the floor. Thank you so much. Hi everyone, it's a, it's a great pleasure to be, uh, to be with you uh, tonight. I know that it has been two very long days, very intense in terms of content, in terms of networking, so uh, I know that the next one and a half hour will be a bit maybe uh, difficult in terms of concentration, but please uh, be with us because I think that what you're, you're going to see in a, in a few minutes will be, I think, really exciting. Um, we'll be actually presenting the, the winners of the co-creation competition that we have launched with the great support of the Zermatt Summit Foundation and other, other partners that I would like to thank uh, deeply. And um, Maybe just uh, as an introduction, just to let you know why Ashoka, who, uh, who is basically known to be a, a global network of social entrepreneurs, is entering this field of co-creation. Uh, it's, it's a really important moment for us, but after almost 30 years of finding and uh, the, the most innovative social entrepreneurs on the planet, Ashoka operates currently in 80 countries, uh, so with 3,000 social entrepreneurs in our network, we, uh, we analyzed, you know, what they were doing. We were looking at their impact and, and very often, to be honest, they have very impressive impact. But when you compare this impact to the large uh, scale of the social issues globally, you can see that there is still a gap, unfortunately. We have been speaking about this for the last two days. The challenge is huge and there are many, many things to be, to be done, to be re reinvented, to be recreated. In, the, in this field, and when you only think about, you know, the four or five billion people who live under the poverty line in our, in our world, you, you can really see uh, how much we still need to, um, to, to how much work we, need, we still need to do. And we also come to the conclusion that we can't act alone. It has been, again, said, said over and over over the last two days, and this is really important that we keep this in mind, that, that we apply it in our day-to-day -day business. We need to work in partnerships. We need to work with people who are not like us. We need to work with people who, who have different perspectives on the world. But this is the richness of this meeting and these encounters that really makes uh, this type of uh, initiative so interesting. So Ashoka has decided to, uh, to really enter this field of co-creation in order to not only identify the very interesting uh, co-creation cases, uh, especially in Europe and under the great leadership of, uh, of Stephanie and her team, um, we are very happy to see that there are things happening in Europe and we didn't want to reinvent the wheel, so our, our goal was not to, uh, to pilot our own projects and to, uh, in a few years' time, to be able to come back to you and say, this is what we have found, this is what works, this is what doesn't work. The, the idea was a bit different and uh, was to go much faster by saying, let's identify the, the existing co-creation cases in Europe, let's try to analyze them, and uh, that will be a great work, we, we will speak about this a bit later, but by doing that, at least we can show a state of the art of what's happening, we can also talk about the challenges, and at least it gives a sense of what still needs to be done in order to, to make co-creation mainstream. Again, this is not easy, that we take a lot of time, that we take a lot of courage for each of us from the social organization perspective, from the business perspective, for the public authorities pers perspective, if we really want to uh, build those new models that, that will require not only courage but commitment, we will fail, we need to be aware of that, but eventually we will also improve until we will find a very interesting solutions that then we can scale up at a very large scale. So. Uh, the co-creation is, is really important because this is probably a way uh, to accelerate social change, to most of the time base it on a market-based approach. This is not philanthropy, this is not CSR, you will see that. This is business, and this is business both for the social entrepreneurs and this is business for the corporations. So tonight, um, we're going to talk about this project, but first of all, I would like to invite Stephanie just to uh, give you a sense of how this competition was organized, how it worked. We have been quite impressed, I have to say, 
uh, with the um, with the with the result of the competition. And just before, uh, because I had this that I forgot. Um, Maybe Stephanie can talk about you know the barriers and the thing. I should have done that, but sorry. Uh, and <laughs> also to thank our, our, our partners because it was not a it was not a, an easy thing to be to be honest. Uh, we we have been really lucky to have the Zermatt Foundation uh, behind us to really accelerate that, and also the Gillet Foundation who, who trust us from day one. And uh, I think uh, we'll be we'll be happy with the results. We had a great great jury uh, two days ago, and it was really uh, exciting. DPD, who has also been a, a, a key player in that, and thank you, for Thomas, for, for Tobias, for, for being with us, and our great uh, pharma company partner, Beringer Ingelheim, who um, who has been trusting us for for for, for four years now in, in in developing with us a, a very very ambitious uh, global initiative called Making More Health, in order to uh, to basically leverage the social innovation in order to predict what is the future of the health sector for the pharma industry. So, so thank you uh, to all of you. Uh, it has been uh, great to start with you. I was really pleased to hear Christopher say that in 10 years' time or 6 years' time, we'll still be uh, working on co-creation and advancing co-creation. This, uh, this is definitely a challenge. And now, as promised, uh, our dear Stephanie was going to tell you bo more about uh, this competition. Thank you, Arnaud, and good, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so we are very excited to be here today with the 15 finalists of the competition, especially that last year, for those who were already in Zermatt, uh, the Zermatt Summit, we already had a session on co-creation, but we had only one case. Um, so we have been busy in the last six months to look for the best cases in Europe and actually to come up with living examples that you will hear um, about tonight, about different different um, projects combining the strengths of the business sector, the social sector to achieve more social impact. So this was, um, let me see how this works. Okay, um, so this was exactly the, the objective of the competition. So select best cases, um, be able to share their stories, connect them, because we really believe in the network uh, effect of being able to share best practices, but also to share about uh, challenges and barriers where we can collectively think about how to go beyond and how to achieve more impact. As well as engage sort of others, and probably many of you in the room have a role to play, whether you are you know, a journalist, whether you are you know, business school professor or university professor, Everyone has a role to actually be able to engage more players in co-creating. Um, so what kind of projects were we looking for in this competition? Um, so this is, you know, we've used our own words, but I was actually struck at how, um, how much convergence we have in the different speeches we heard yesterday or in the criteria that we are looking for, there's a lot of similarity. Um, and of course, sort of purpose is the first, uh, you know, the first uh, and the most important. But the first criteria that we have for the project were um, what we call tearing down the walls. So we know that there are a lot of barriers today between business and social. Um, so these are two sectors that have different visions of the world, sometimes different uh, cultural codes, different languages, uh, quote unquote. So there's and, and sometimes a lack of trust between sectors because we just don't know each other well enough uh, to trust and to be able to start um, you know projects, ambitious projects together. So this was the first uh, criteria because to co-create you need to be at least two. <laughs> uh, so we were looking for project with at least one business and one social organization involved. Of course, we know that co-creation can be more complex, that if we want to address societal issues, and especially complex ones, we need sometimes many different partners, including the public sector, multiple companies, and multiple social organizations. The second one was um, what we call value for all. So I think we also talked about this yesterday. But projects that were creating truly value for society, value for all partners as well. And value for all partners is very important um, to ensure the sustainability of the project and be able to make sure that this is not just a pet project, especially within the company, but this is something that can grow and have actually impact at scale. Because co-creation is difficult, so what we want is scale, because if it's just to have a small local project with a company, then it's better to do it alone um, and save time. Then, oops, back. Okay. <laughs> um, then impact, I mean, of course, this was a big criteria, 
project that, that are addressing a societal issue in Europe. So the focus of the competition was Europe. And some of the projects are actually early stayed. Uh, you'll see that you know, some of them have started maybe a year ago, two years ago. So we have different stages of project. But we also looked at the potential for bigger impact. You know, is the idea scalable? Is the idea re replicable? So these, these were the kind of questions that we uh, discussed with the jury on, on Wednesday. And um, the fourth one is actually the people, because everything is about people. I mean, you can have the best business plan, but co-creating, again, can be difficult. Um, it's actually changing the way of doing business, changing the way of running a social organization. So we need people who are change makers within companies or within the social organization to be able to bring about this change. And a little bit of context about what happened uh, before today. Uh, so we started actually building the, you know, an online platform, which is an open source platform around December. So you can have access to this platform. You can actually check any of the projects that apply to the competition, the finalists and the winners, and have information about this project. Um, then we were calling for projects from February to April. We got actually 338 projects, so we're very happy with the mobilization. We worked with several network partners all over Europe. We got projects from 34, proje uh, for, for 34 countries in Europe. And um, we had a tough job actually to do the shortlisting from 338 to 15 finalists, the 15 that you, were, uh, you will see today. We, have a, uh, we had an even harder job on uh, Wednesday afternoon uh, with the member of the jury that we will meet to, uh, to select the winners of the competition. Um, and the three criteria that we had were innovation, um, and especially innovation about the partnership, um, impact, and sustainability. So these, uh, these were sort of the, what we discussed. So over to you, Arnaud, to present our finalists. Great, thank you, Stephanie. Uh, so now time has come to, um, to get started with uh, with a session of pitches. I would lie if I, if I was telling you that our pitchers are not stressed. They are totally overstressed. <laughs> they, <laughs> they have rehearsed for, you know, several times. It has been, it has been a, a actually pretty fun. Uh, and it has really helped build a community. We, we have people who, who, who were supposed to, 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 to pitch in French and decided to, to pitch in English. So actually, we, they have improved over the last 48 hours their language skills, which is at least what they will uh, take away from, from here. And, uh, and it was, it was a, gr a great way to, uh, to really build this community. So um, again, please listen to them because you will be asked at the end of this uh, pitches to, to be voting for, for one of those, that, that will be the special public prize, and, uh, and that will be very important that you, that, you, that, that you vote. So basically, technically, what's going to happen, because we won't have that much time, so you have on your tables, you know, the list of, um, of all the, the, the people who will speak tonight. When, uh, at the very end, uh, we, we are going to have two batches of uh, speakers, you know, a first round, a first round of eight. Then Stephanie will will come back on stage to to share with us what are the findings uh, because it was already interesting to analyze. You know the 300 plus projects. Uh, there are interesting things that we like to share with you that will also allow you to rest a bit before we have the second round of seven pitches. Then you will be uh, asked to vote. Uh, so, so then we, we can announce not only the winners, but also this special, special prize that you will be giving. So once you, you will have filled, you will, you will give, the, give the, 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 the sheets to someone of your table. You, get, you, you will choose one that will actually handle them to, the, to our colleagues so, the, so we can pick up the, the sheets and then make the calculations. That clear to you guys? Yes. Cool. So let's start. I think we have some music. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can give a big round of applause just to uh, I would like to welcome I would like to welcome on stage the first so the first talker. So we have a great pleasure to welcome Caroline who is a French entrepreneur, Yuan who is rep representing the, the, the business partner. And guys you will you will have one and a half minutes to convince the audience. Over to you guys. Okay. Good afternoon. Today out of more than seven thousand can we stop the clock? <laughs> <laughs> Today, out of more than 7,000 rare diseases, only 5% have approved treatments. 
And a major reason for this is that pharma companies are often reluctant to invest R&D money in small markets. As a result, there could be a potential gold mine of treatment just sitting on the shelves of pharma companies' libraries. <laughs> the co-creation all started with a discovery of such a gold nugget, a drug that has the opportunity to address Duchenne muscular dystrophy, a deadly pediatric disease. To give these kids a chance, 50,000 boys uh, potentially suffering from a fatal disease with 100% fatality. Uh, Merck Serono agreed to set up a fund uh, to establish a non-for-profit foundation called Esperare to transfer the rights to that drug to Esperare and to co-fund its further development. With its 4P model, patient-private-public partnership, the foundation has created a new collaborative and financially viable model to recycle treatment for rare diseases. With this first project in Duchenne, Esperare has already proven its business model and is already, in fact, extending its impact with a second Merck-Serono project in a rare renal disease. And today, the foundation is expanding to partner with other partner from academia and from other pharma and uh, is, is bringing an opportunity to develop more underexplored drugs for underserved patients. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. And Thank you for opening the ball. You know, uh, it's always it's always difficult. So double double round of applause. I think we, that we can give you our second uh, speaker comes from the north of France. Uh, he will be speaking alone, but representing the joint venture that he has designed. And I would like uh, you guys to to to, to welcome Jean-Yves from Envie de Nord. Thank you. Well. There is a very high level of unemployment in north of France. Envie de Zer is a work integration social enterprise, which is um, specialized in uh, the recycling of waste of um, uh, electrical equipment, such as the fridges, uh, uh, um, washing machines, or Did screens. And uh, in um, Oh, sorry, I'm very uh, oh, impressed. <laughs> well, we are in family here, so uh, that's, that's the family. And for this, for this activity, we needed to huge investment and um, a high technology we didn't master. So, in 2005, we met a Dutch company, high-profit company, and. Uh, we, uh, they accept to invest 3 million euros in a shredder in order to dismantle fridges. And then we, we, we created with them um, uh, uh, the first uh, joint venture in uh, Europe uh, between a social enterprise and a for-profit company. Um, so what, what is the impact today? Sorry? What is the impact yeah. of this joint venture? So uh, we, uh, we installed our command plant on a um, uh, brownfield uh, site and uh, re re-industrialized it by hiring people who have been uh, uh, laid off two years before. And uh, 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 nine years later, today, we... Uh, we uh, we uh, recycle 13,000 tons of waste and uh, employs 200 people. And we are delighted that this uh, model is successful and is uh, duplicated by other social entrepreneurs in France. Thank you. Congratulations. Good job. It's, thank you so much. It's not, it's not easy, but con huge congrats on the impact of this initiative. Then I would like to, to welcome someone from Ireland. She's going to talk about a very important disease. So please welcome <laughs> Nikki Agerty. Your turn. 
We start with a really simple idea. Harness the extraordinary power of business to create a world where you no longer get left out because you have a disability. Almost one in five of us in Ireland has a disability, yet people with disabilities are twice as likely to be unemployed and 40% have experienced discrimination in accessing goods and services in the last year alone. Our society has a deeply ingrained habit of exclusion. But habits can be broken, and that's what we're here to do. We work with business because we know that if the places where we work, where we play, where we eat, if all of them included people with disabilities, then society will naturally follow because business is all pervasive. And it has proven that it can create significant change, for example, through the environmental movement. For business, we believe that disability is the new green. Our 10 Canchi leader businesses, which include Abbott Pharmaceutical, Deloitte, PepsiCo, they recognize the value of inclusion attracting and retaining the best talent, accessing new customer segments, building their brands. So, Canchi and our Canchi leaders have been tasked with making Ireland the most inclusive business community in the world by 2020. And more than that, we want to create the first global movement on inclusive business. We have a one billion person ambition and we're looking for people that want to help us make that happen. Thank you. Thank you, Nikki. When we talk about ambition, I think that you, now you see what we are meaning. Um, now we'd like to, uh, to hand over to Vincent. Oh, you're here. So a uh, French colleague that's going to talk about access and renovation. So please, one and a half minute, just to convince the audience. Thank you. Um, imagine that uh, next winter you are not be able to pay your uh, energy bill anymore and to hit your home. Um, like 10 million people in Europe today. Um, however, we know how to reduce uh, energy consumption drastically with uh, low energy renovations. Uh, but it's only for wealthy people today. That's why we are working with local authorities and um, energy experts um, to, to develop Doremi. Doremi is a, an operational approach to unlocking the market of, for uh, um, low energy, ambitious low energy renovations of houses. Uh, we are co-creating um, financial and technical tools um, in order to um, achieve low energy and profitable uh, renovation and to make them affordable uh, for po poorest people. Today we are implementing Doremi on three territories in France and uh, on 20 more before the end of this year. And if we extend it um, on the, in the whole France, uh, we would be able to create, to generate a market of about 9 billion euro a year during 20 years um, and to help 7 million households uh, to access to comfortable or at least decent um, houses. Um, in order to, uh, in order to uh, avoid to uh, waste money to, to uh, um, buy only energy uh, um, and to burn up our money, uh, we think it's better to um, put it on, uh, on this huge, huge market uh, with Doremi, uh, this huge market of uh, low energy um, renovations, and then uh, to create uh, local jobs and to fight um, social exclusion and also to fight climate change. Thank you very much. What is good with social entrepreneurs that they are totally unpredictable. So, uh, so <laughs> Vincent decided to <laughs> add a few sentences, I think, at the end. But thank you again. It was it was a great job. So now let's uh, go to the UK 
Uh, I would like to welcome Rachel. Where is Rachel? You are here, and you also have. Yeah, you can. <laughs> one and a half minute. Ready? Yep. When you want. Yep, ready. Thank you very much. Um, in order to start, I'd like to tell you how I came across the TimeWise Foundation. About eight years ago, I was looking for a job. I wanted to find a job that I could use, um, find, combine with my two young children, but also that would use the experience that I had in the not-for-profit and public sectors. Like so many parents and other people, I struggled to find flexible work that would allow me to do those two things. I was fortunate. I came across the TimeWise Foundation, and I've worked for them for the eight years since then. TimeWise looks to f increase flexible work in the UK so that everybody, parents or others, who want to combine work with family life or other commitments can do that. And that's important because of uh, the need to reduce gender inequality, the need to reduce maternal worklessness, and ultimately reduce child poverty. So how are we doing this? At the moment, we're working with 22 partners, including JP Morgan. We're working with them in terms of their recruitment and HR teams, looking to change the way that they employ people and define jobs. We're working with them in terms of uh, leadership and looking at cultural change from the top down. And very importantly, we're working with current employees who work flexibly to encourage them to lean out, to share their stories and to mentor others. And this has been successful. We've been able to offer to 60,000, uh, we've been able to offer jobs that have reached 60,000 people. And those part-time jobs pay on average 51% more than the current jobs, part-time jobs in Britain. We're looking to lead a revolution in the workplace, change preconceptions about what works and what doesn't, and change the way flexible work is perceived. Thank you very much. Thank you. So he, here comes a challenge. Uh, there won't be just only one speaker, but three. So uh, I don't know how they can do that, uh, knowing that one of, one of those is, is really uh, a long, long speaker when it starts. <laughs> but we'll try to make it happen. And <laughs> please welcome Jean-Louis, Maxime, and Cédric. Jean-Louis, Maxime from Crésus, and Cédric from, uh, sorry, from Kofinoga. Uh, there is about one million other indebted households in France, actually. We couldn't be passive anymore about this problem. That's why we created the preventive hub in crisis with the volunteer. This is a scandal we decided to fight against. Lazare Kofinoga is a credit company. And we have created in 1998 the first budget support team. But our clients had credits in many other companies. So we needed a um, third party as Quasus to solve this problem at a scale. As alone, we were too weak. So we are detecting the clients through a um, well-tried and co-elaborated uh, co process. And uh, we propose them to be coached by Quasus. Only since the beginning of the year, we have coached about 4,000 households. Uh, we consolidated about 200 million debts on banks. And uh, actually, uh, the, the, the process is well tried, and we have more than 30 partners. I am convinced that this model helps us to uh, better live together. Uh, listen to uh, bankers. Uh, we came to you with anger. And now, with enthusiasm, we built uh, a model, uh, co-construction. Thank you. <laughs> well done. So we'll, we'll keep this in mind, Jean-Louis, eh, for the next time. Um, so, <laughs> so now we'd like to welcome the, the other trio. Um, so they come from Germany, and I would like that to welcome Stephanie and Florian from SAP, and Thomas from Special Eastern to explain us how we can include autistic people into society back to work. Please come on stage or not on stage. Thank you. So, in SAP, we are committed to employ people from the autistic spectrum because of their specific skills and talents. In SAP, we defined an overall target 
so that we have one percentile of our workforce by 2020 coming from the autistic spectrum. The Specialist Sterne People Foundation is aiming to create one million jobs for autistic people. We know that autistic people have very special capabilities and in the right environment they're very efficient and effective. Relating to those capabilities, innovation is at the very heart of our intellectual renewal at SAP. We believe that innovation happens there where people think bold, new and different. People from the autism spectrum do exactly that. We have developed a comprehensive methodology to place autistic people into companies. Our partner model is based on clear roles and responsibilities and ends up in a clear win-win-win situation. Win first is for SAP, of course, because we profit from the deep knowledge understanding from specialists in it. Giving autistic people a permanent contract makes a big difference to those people. For many of them, it's the first time they are entered into a labor market. So at the State of the Union, we currently have employed 40 employees from the spectrum. Our run rate is to have 650 by, 200, by 2020 uh, to really improve people's lives. The, peop the Specialist Diana Sp uh, People Foundation is keep on uh, aiming for the one million jobs in this model that we would like to establish with other corporations as well. Well done. Thank you, thank you. Let's, let's move to Spain now and let's see how combining physical activities and nutrition can totally open a new market. Thank you for Consuelo and Guillaume to be with us. Thank you. There are more than 15 million older people aged over 85 in Europe. This will nearly triple by 2050. Quality of life, autonomy, social inclusion, dignity is not being addressed by the current one-size-fits-all curative and medicalized care. Activida is a synergy which liberates two prevention methods. Seal Blue providing uh, adapted sport activities and Nutricia by Danone uh, offering nutritional supplements and services adapted to older people. Actividad joins the indivisible exercise and nutrition. Actividad is a care model. Actividad is a holistic approach for elderly in nursing homes. Actividad is based on two main pillars. First, to offer a person-centered care which includes early detection and screening for elderly at risk of malnourishment or physical impairment. Second, to provide very concrete solutions to help other people to stay fit and socially connected uh, by providing um, um, uh, an offer which uh, provides sessions of physical activity and interactive sessions of nutrition. Currently, one year after launching this project, uh, we work uh, together with uh, 160 uh, nursing homes, and in the next new, uh, five years, uh, Activida will reach uh, of a total uh, 451 new nursing homes, and uh, it's, it's representative, re representative uh, more or less 8,000 8, uh, weekly beneficiaries. Through Activida, we have the, um, the ambition to improve the quality of life and to improve the autonomy of the oldest old and to make them play a higher role in our society. Thank you. Nice. So we're reaching the end of the first round of speeches and um, I would like Stephanie to come back on stage just to share with us a bit of, you know, what are the trends, basically, when we look at those 338 projects, you know, what, what can we learn from that, or are there specific trends that we can learn? Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, I have the double task to actually um, help you sort of reflect on the other project, tell you what we have seen through the competition, and also give a little bit of breeze for the, the next finalists so that they can think about their pitches. Um, so two main messages from the competition. We are still sort of uh, refining the analysis that we will share with all of you who are interested. But basically, the first one is that co-creation exists. So we have found these cases. So we, you'll see this 10% in red um, in the graphic. So we found actually cases in different sectors and industries uh, but this, this is still a very emerging trend so this is still something that we need to strengthen so that more companies and more social organization can work together um, the second one the second big message is that there's a lot of potential uh, because we've seen a lot of business social partnerships I mean business social partnerships are not new they have existed since, since many years um, but we've we found a lot of partnerships that we believe could be improved or boosted uh, to be able to get much more value out of these you know unique and complementary expertise that the different partners bring so we saw a lot of what we called um, traditional CSR traditional CSR is basically project that uh, were not necessarily linked to the core business of the company that were of course you know always very good projects uh, you know naive, very good intentions but it was hard to understand why the company was involved. So um, often this is, you know, one person within the company who is very interested, for example, in schooling and education, but the question is how to make it sustainable and scalable. Um, then we had this other category called, uh, you know, strategic CSR. So it, then it started to be much closer to the core business of the company. Uh, but we had a hard time understanding, at least from the competition, from what we had in terms of information, why the company was truly interested um, in this project and how business and social were truly complementing each other to solve something that could not have been solved by only one of the partner. We have only also seen, especially in Eastern Europe, a lot of social enterprises, so basically um, um, social projects so with a social mission, but that were not necessarily sort of co-creating. It was basically a social enterprise selling services to companies in order to um, make revenues and reinvest in their social mission. So this is sort of the different you know, type of projects, but I won't go too much into detail. Um, we also sort of through you know, the different cases that we've seen, we we're wondering what type of co-creation projects are we seeing and why is co-creation, why and when is co-creation needed? So we came up with these three categories that we may refine in the, you know, in the future. The first one is what we call the implant, uh, in the Ashoka jargon, is basically when social entrepreneurs um, like Specialist Stern, uh, the partner of SAP that you heard um, a bit earlier, um, has a solution, a solution that works but is only reaching uh, you know limited number of beneficiaries because of you know resources constraint that may have social enterprises so um, in this case the social entrepreneurs are looking for companies as and, and sort of implanting their solution within companies that have an interest in adopting this solution in order to reach a much higher number of, of beneficiaries so this is for example the case of uh, autism at work the second one um, is what we call the inventor. So basically, there is a need for a new type of solution. Um, it could be, you know, a new product or services. Uh, for example, a new way of researching, like Duchenne uh, Esperare that we heard earlier, or it could be a new way to prevent over indebtedness, like Cresus and the banks building new platforms to go inside the processes of the banks and to be able to identify as early as possible people in over indebtedness. And the third one is what we call the, the master organizer, or uh, actually the video that we saw with uh, Spark News earlier made me think about this. This is really the conductor, uh, you know, with you know different the different pieces of the solution exist today, but there is a need for somebody or an organization who will take the lead in actually creating efficiency and bringing these pieces together. For example, Better Together that you heard about earlier is bringing together you know, is, is creating a platform to basically broker all of the people looking for flexible jobs and uh, on the other side, employers who also need talents and, and highly competitive, competitive talents. So this is uh, also what we've seen. 
But moreover, um, I mean, kind of the higher message is also we see a different type of mind mindsets, a different type of mm. organization, a different type of leadership through these projects. So this is really sort of, you know, transitioning from, um, you know, state of mind where uh, we expect, you know, the government or some somebody else to fix the problem to taking responsibility for this problem and saying, I can play, play a role as a business, as a social organization, as a citizen. It's also sort of, you know, going from... Um, a situation where, uh, you know, organizations are bureaucratic and hierarchical to thinking about fluid teams of teams, you know, teams, um, you know, beyond organizational border uh, who work together and truly sort of, you know, um, co-create together. Um, and this is also sort of from a mentality thinking that, you know, um, only great men can come up with great theories to uh, this truly everyone a change maker spirit. So this is sort of what we are seeing, you know, over the, the very specific uh, project, but um, let's go back to the <laughs> to the finalists and hear the rest of the projects. Thank you, <coughs> thank you, Stephanie. I can see she's ready. She's already on stage. Uh, I'm the great pleasure to, to welcome Anne Sharpie, and you will see how sometimes innovation from southern countries can also influence and inspire uh, programs in, in in France, for instance. Anne Sharpie, over to you. Many people in French low-income areas feel powerless and disengaged. They underuse public utilities because they lack information and don't trust the institution that provide them. Therefore, they get excluded from mainstream society. Water, for instance, is an uh, essential good, but communities often consume too much water they can't afford it and they get in conflict with the company. On the other hand, half of them consume bottled water, very expensive. So I decided to create a community leaders and to help them to uh, rebuild trust within their communities by reconnecting people with institution. I invented a new job for them, smart neighbor. They go door to door to give their neighbors useful information and uh, give and power, empower them. Veolia sent us uh, to on water topic. 500 families that have been visited learn how to reduce their consumption. They also uh, learned, uh, saved 20 euros per month by learning that tap water were, was drinkable. Moreover, they dared to access to contact a social service, they could pay the bill and they got involved in their community. Now, a smart neighbor uh, increased their leadership and go on with other topics, transportation, energy, uh, education, health. Many companies can work with us to improve the service in their neighborhoods, representing 10% of all European population. <laughs> well done, well done. Uh, it's a great pleasure now to go to, to, to Portugal. I was actually, Stephanie, when you were presenting the pie, I could see those guys who put their glasses and said, this is not the right colors. So we promise the next time the pie will be with the, with the right one. Please yeah. welcome Jose and Miguel from <laughs> Portugal. <laughs> Thank you. Color blindness affects 350 million people in the world and 10% of the male population can identify the colors of the clothes, the pencils, the transports, the hospitals, etc. without help. Uh, I, as a designer, and I think designers have the good mission to create a more inclusive and a more accessible world, uh, after eight years of research, the, uh, when I work with colorblind people, I create a tool uh, for, uh, called Colored. The Colored is a new language, a new universal language. It will represent three symbols, and with the concept of the color addiction you learn in the school, uh, with only three symbols, the, the colorblind people can identify all the colors. For Viarco, that's probably the smallest pencil factory in the world. The co-creation project with Colored 
was so simple and natural as adding the yellow symbol to the red symbol to make the orange. We produced pencils for more than 100 years in Portugal, and children are the first ones to suffer with the disability of recognizing colors in school. So for us, Color Ed, it's highly inclusive, pedagogical, and brought a lot of value to the Viarco project. And with, only with uh, co-creation with the different partners in different countries can we take the color ad to the old world to guarantee the inclusion without discrimination. And for this model, uh, we call win-win-win. Win for us, guarantee the sustainability of this project and guarantee the social impact. For the partners with value on the economy and social value and for the colorblind people can take a tool in all over the world without cost and without discrimination. For us, color is for all. Thank you. Thank you. Great job, thank you. Um, I'm sure that you're discovering that some of those social issues were totally unknown and since, you know, and still they, they are huge. So it's great that we have, you know, combinations of both social entrepreneurs and, and companies, not that little, uh, who decide to, to, to fight them. So now let's go to Turkey and let's see how uh, information technology can actually improve the lives of hundreds of thousands of people. So I'm happy to welcome Tulin and Okai. Up to you guys. So this is the story of how we have changed the lives of 1.4 million farmers and their families. Agriculture is vital for Turkey's economy and farmers have many problems. Many of them are in debt and they can't access to information about weather forecasts, market prices, new agricultural techniques and new markets. Information technology um, offers solutions to these problems. Uh, we needed a co-creation partner to reach the farmers. Um, farmers Club uh, is a um, holistic approach uh, to serve information for farmers. Uh, it, it includes SMS service, an application, and face-to-face -face communication tools. As well as we create the infrastructure, software, and we provide the training truck. Also, to increase the reach, we made some advertisement and PR. Uh, a stabit uh, is a um, knowledge um, on agricultural sector. Um, <laughs> sorry, uh, an agricultural sector. Uh, we we create the content uh, that detect uh, farmers' needs uh, and large network for farmers. Um, they they. Um, they increased, uh, they increased um, their uh, sales and uh, productivity and urban migration has decreased. There has been a 40% increase in farmers who use Vodafone and now we are planning to implement the project in other Vodafone countries. We know that, uh, we know that um, access information uh, for farmers vital is is vital uh, for a sustainable world in the future. Thank you. Well done. Thank you so much. Uh, very, very impressive. And uh, I should probably not say that, but uh, I think that all of them are so impressive. Uh, then I would like to, to welcome two French fellows. Uh, and this is they are Marie and Eric. They were Marie representing Adi and Eric representing O2. Up to you. So Adi is a French NGO. Uh, we already help uh, more than 100,000 uh, low-income entrepreneurs, excluding from the banking system and the, the labor market, to create their own job. Our problem was that more and more people are coming to see us with a willingness to create a job, but with no viable business idea or not willing to do it on their own. So as a French leading microfinance institution, we had to find a solution to come up to, to face this problem. Uh, so we decided to, to launch our social micro-franchising initiative. 
the idea, uh, the idea was to give a turnkey business model to these low um, micro entrepreneurs. In order to create our first network, we w were looking for a very strong business partner with good brands, uh, strong know-how, and services to be provided to uh, to the micro franchises. That's why we came to see O2 Home Services. And therefore, O2 created a joint venture with uh, with Adi. O2 is the leader in providing services at home in France. Uh, services like uh, home cleaning, childcare, home care. We have more than 10,000 employees in France. And we realized there, were, there was a greater need for new services such as gardening. So we thought it would be a great idea to create a joint venture with, with Adi. And uh, so far, uh, more than 30 have been created. And uh, all, all these entrepreneurs uh, are happy. They make money. We've proven the model. It's a nice business model for everyone. Uh, we realize as well that we can expand the model to new services. We believe we can expand the business to other, to other countries. We, be, we really believe it's, a, it's the beginning of a long story. Thank you. Well done. Thank you so much uh, for this project. Then we're going to go to Czech Republic, uh, or Czech Republic is coming to us. Czech Republic, sorry, is coming to us. And Zdenek is going to talk about transcript and his partnership. In my country live about half million hearing impaired people. Majority of them do not understand sign language. Therefore, they prefer written form as their means of communication. Professional transcribers can help them to minimize their communication barrier. Unfortunately, there is lack of such professionals and governmental funding is still missing. Fortunately, there are social responsible companies who understand needs of deaf people and see their potential as customers. Our partner, the CSOB Bank, was the first commercial institution who uh, introduced and implement transcription services in its network. <coughs> From commercial point of view, our project is based on offering an effective tool uh, for communicating with hearing impaired people to companies as competitive advantage. This leads to shortening the service time and prevents any possible misunderstanding. To overcome uh, the lack of professional transcribers, we start to train blind candidates who have sig significantly better short-term memory and con concentration. Our project has a huge potential to minimize communication barriers and improve the quality of life of hearing impaired people. Our vision is that one group of people with special needs helps to the other one. And the mission of our social enterprise called Transcript Online is to make it happen. Thank you, Zinek. So now we're going to go back to, to Spain and I have a pleasure to welcome a duet and to welcome Anna Bea from the Anna Bea Foundation you. and Esther from Danone. One in three women, we are victims of domestic violence all over the world. And I was one of them for 11 years. Until one night, I pick up my four children, put them into the car and go to the police. Only 30% of abused women, we are brave enough to speak out. And even then, we are in social exclusion because society, you only see our black eyes. You don't see our strength. And we only get invisible jobs with low salary and any social recognition. Now I'm a survivor, I'm an Ashoka Fellow, and together with Anon, we create, we co-create a social solution to a business need. Companies will really need motivated, high performance um, sales promoters. And abused women, they really need this valuable job opportunity in order to empower themselves. So then we had this win-win model. An Abella Social School for Women Empowerment, what she does is offer to these abused women, they offer personal coaching, professional training, so that they can empower themselves and release their full potential working as brand ambassadors. In collaboration with Danone, 200 women, they change their lives from victim to empower women. 
Now we are part of the solution. We are chain makers inside companies. We increase sales. We decrease the start turnover from 63% to 2%. And we are offering a top quality service like a brand ambassador. We need more companies like Danone. We need to reach 1,200 million of abused women in the world and together co-create a society free of violence against women. Thank you. So now is already the, the last speaker of the, of the night. I would like to please welcome Gregor from, uh, from Austria. You. Oh, you're equipped. Who's going to speak about his program to, uh, to get access to job. Well, at the age of 18, I jumped into the sea in a very, very beautiful beach. At that moment, I broke my cervical spine. And sitting in a wheelchair, I realized that there are very strong prejudices and images about people with disability, which make a normal life almost impossible. I started career moves to change society by bringing people with disabilities into jobs. It is 15% of the population who have a disability. The idea of career moves is to make a paradigmatic shift, not to see disability as something dis difficult, as a burden. We focus on their abilities. We focus on economic chances. We focus on competitive advantages for the business community. In 2010, we started a co-creation with a leading online job platform called Charisma. Both partners bring in their know-how and both partners have definitive competitive advantages from this co-creation. We have been able to offer more than 10,000 jobs for people with disabilities in the last three years. Due to this success, we now want to bring career moves into other European countries. And with every job a person with disability gets, not only his or her life will change, but also the lives of their colleagues and employers who will learn how to treat each other. Simply normal. And thus, society will change. Thank you. <laughs> So I hope you enjoyed uh, this exercise. Again, huge thank you. I would like to, to welcome again all the speakers on stage, if you don't mind. We'd like to take a, a picture of you guys. The time for you on your tables to pick up your pencils, the, um, the, the, the sheet of paper, and to choose only one. Huh? Not, uh, it's not multiple choice. You would put us in trouble. So one, it's tough, but please. And you have one minute. You have you have one minute to do it.
Ça y est, on a les votes On a récupéré les... Ok, cool. So, has everyone voted and, uh, and given back the... No, you have, you have the, the sheets here. Yeah, okay, thank you. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your attention, your concentration, and your listening skills. It was it was really important, and uh, I hope you could feel really the you know the power of and the energy of those change makers coming either from the social or the business spheres. And I think it's really encouraging, and in a way, it's just a fleshing out what you have been discussing over, over the last two days. Um, we need more and more of those people, of those change makers within companies or within social organizations. Yesterday, e even uh, even Vokier said that within the public uh, politicians, we should have those guys as well. So I think th it's a shame that he was not here today, but hopefully we can send him some uh, videos uh, to inspire him as well. Um, so it, it was it has been a real real pleasure, and, and now the time has come to uh, uh, to come to the. I would say not not just a serious part because you know awarding people is nice, uh, but you know I think that everyone uh, has really done a great job. But the rule is that you know this is this was a competition that there are there are several winners with a with a with a money prize. But I would like again to thank all of you to have participated, to have really committed to be here to work. You had a great session this morning as well, and hopefully you will uh, not only inspire people here but also make connections and maybe bring further. Your, your 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 initiative. So now time has come to uh, uh, to, uh, to 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 introduce our jury members. So as Stephanie reminded us, we we had a, a great session two two days ago. It was it was not that easy. Uh, it was a, a lot of discussions because it's not just about you know reading projects. It's also about discussing on the criteria and so on. And by the way. Uh, this was very short, you know, one and a half minute is definitely not making justice to, you know, uh, the entire projects, but you can find them on the Changemakers platform, so changemakers.com, and you can search for the co-creation competition, and then you will have access to all of those projects, you can deep dive and un better understand how, how they work. So, please, uh, now I would like to welcome on stage the, 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 the members of the jury, uh, unfortunately, Berenger, uh, cannot be with us. She had a surgery a few days ago, but we are thinking of her, and uh, I think she would she will enjoy being with us. But I would like to welcome Christopher, obviously, uh, Doris, uh, Tobias, and Matthias to be with us on stage. Do you mind coming? So that's where that's the moment where we have all the people shaking, you know. Uh, so we had a hard time, and the jury had a hard time, uh, because not only we had to find, you know, four winners, but as always, in a jury, you have people who said, but can't we do a social, um, a sp a social uh, mention, you know, a special mention, sorry, a special mention to one of those, because we strongly believe that it's not fair that this project is not recognized. So it, it happened uh, as well here. And we'd like to start with this one before we enter the, the, the four finalists. So I would like to welcome uh, on stage our friends from Turkey, uh, to, to who has really the special mention, and, and really we have been really impressed by the outreach of the project. So I don't know if Okai and Tulin are here. Okay. Where Okai? <laughs> So, I think that the jury has been very impressed with the outreach of, of such an initiative and the, and the ambition, as you, could, as you could feel, and I really encourage you to, to have a look at this platform and, and you know, yes, and... Uh, I think that honestly we would have put special mentions to, 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 to everyone. Uh, we need to think about that for the future, but it was great. But that's, that's the game as well. Uh, congratulations again. So now we're going to start with the first prize, which is uh, that, that will be uh, actually uh, given by, by Tobias from, from DPD. You know, within this competition, we had a special uh, focus on what we call the last mile, uh, you know, how to reinvent logistics, how social entrepreneurs can help with helping big logistical companies uh, invent new models and basically uh, we have decided to award uh, for this prize that will be uh, awarded by, by, by Tobias, our friend Anne Sharpie from Voisin Malin. Yeah. 
Tu toi qui Régis Burus. Ah oui. Bien. So we have some. Uh, We have we actually we have some time maybe to uh, to deep dive. You wanted to maybe to say a few words. Yes. So um, for DPD, the concept or the whole idea of co-creation was new, and for us it was really a challenge to participate because the last mile is a very big challenge for logistics companies. We deliver all over Europe thousands or tens of thousands, hundred thousands of parcels per day, and we get in touch with the whole population. Our parcel uh, uh, our, our drivers deliver parcels to elderly people. They go to the, to the suburban zones, they deliver parcels to pregnant women. And this is a, a different setting than deliver parcels on a red carpet to someone on Champs-Élysées. So we think that this is a, a great opportunity for us as a logistics company to think about co-creation with, uh, with uh, social uh, institutions or NGOs. And we found that amongst uh, dozens of others, Voisamale was the concept which um, Uh, convinced us the most about the co-creation potential and this is why we want to support Anne and her team with a coaching program by our senior management team by at least the end of this year and now you also know why we were so curious to m set a date for end of July mm. to start working with you because it's really we have a great work to do and our management team not only in Switzerland but also Belgium, France and in other countries is really curious to support you to scale up your uh, project of Wasamala. Thank you. I'm, I'm not, I was not in jury. Huh? You, <laughs> they are the ones, but uh, you can kiss me again. Um, I <laughs> maybe just a, just a few words, you know. Uh, maybe you know with Violia, uh, j just you know, in one or two sentences, you know. How does that work, co-creation? Because when we see you guys, it seems to be so simple, but we know that it's not. So. What is the, you know, how do you convince such a big company uh, to, to, to work with you? What was your secret? Well, um, they, they had identified uh, the need. They knew that the, they had cost uh, not to reach these people because uh, the, the people don't pay their bill. Uh, they don't open the door when somebody of the company come to, to, to notice what is on the counter and to know how much co con consumption they have, the people have. And, and there is a very bad uh, climate between uh, the company and the people. And furthermore, the, uh, the, um, the mayor uh, doesn't have a very good uh, image of Veolia. Then I was conscious of, uh, they were conscious of everything, and I was. Then I, I, meet, <laughs> I met Oliver, Olivier, Who, who had already uh, worked with communities in, in Mar Morocco and in India, then he was very sens uh, sensitive, sensibilized to this question and to, to the strong of people from the areas or, or pe of peer-to-peer -peer message. And uh, he knew that the trust co can't come from upstairs to down, top down. You have to, to count with the people who live there and who have uh, herself make the, made the experience of, of con uh, uh, reduce, reducing her c consumption of many things and they can transmit, they can tell others how to do and the people will, uh, um, will um, um, uh, understand and, and uh, will believe. believe them. Yes, that's it. And, and, and actually... <laughs> When, yes. when you come from a big company, is it, is it easy to work with, with a very small organization? Yes, uh, yes, it is not uh, difficult, but we, it needs time uh, because we have different cultures. But uh, after, if we agree on the aim of the project, and we take time, every time, uh, it is not uh, difficult. Uh, I wanted to, to say that uh, for us, it is not to help Voisin-Malin that uh, we work with Voisin-Malin. It is because uh, we have a problem to touch, to have a dialogue with all of our customers. 
So uh, we have uh, customers who want only uh, some SMS to have information about their leaks, water leaks. But some of our customers are low-income communities. They don't speak French. They live in French. And uh, they don't have uh, uh, computers, etc. They don't go in our agencies. And we cannot explain to them that we have uh, financial help, etc., etc. So it is really to have a relationship with these customers, very materialized, uh, material <laughs> relationship. Uh, and it is really the last matters to have uh, relationship with these customers. And, uh, and think that I speak excellent English, but not very quick. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't have, uh, I don't present the project with uh, Anne, but I think it is really co-creation when Wazamalin is working with uh, on other public utilities or other uh, uh, entreprise, as we say in French. <laughs> so uh, it is Thank really you. good job to work with Anne. Congratulations. Do you want to add something? Thank you so much. Uh, to, 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 to give the, the next prize, which is the first, actually, uh, not the first prize, but the first money prize in the series of tonight, I would like to welcome Matthias Fuchs, who's going to announce himself, who has been awarded. Matthias, how about you? Thanks, Anno. Good afternoon. I've prepared a 90-minute speech. I hope that's, that's cool. <laughs> okay with everyone. No, but more seriously, I'd, uh, I'd like to make a, a per I would like to start with a personal comment. Um, uh, for me, I mean, you typically start presentations with thanks for inviting me. It's a privilege to be here. For me, it's a true privilege to be part of the Making More Health initiative together with Ashoka. And it's probably the first time in my life that I'm doing something uh, truly meaningful. Uh, and I think I also speak on behalf of the 48,000 employees of uh, Beringer Ingelheim that uh, this collaboration is not only a source of innovation, but even more so a source of inspiration. We had a highly controversial, but ultimately um, constructive uh, discussion within the jury. And uh, the white smoke uh, appeared uh, after I think five <laughs> or six hours. <laughs> And uh, I am delighted to announce uh, the runner-up, and uh, I'd like to invite uh, Advancing Treatment for Duchenne to the stage. And I assume everybody will accuse me now that I'm biased because I'm farmer. <laughs> 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 no, but I mean, obviously, the jury, the jury is strongly, um, first of all, when, when, when my colleagues asked me, what are they actually doing? I mean, I said, well, they're recycling the data rubbish in the cellars from pharma industry. And I think that's exactly what you said. And, but however, this, this data rubbish is actually a treasure. And I think what you're doing makes absolute sense. So uh, we, the jury strongly believes that this is uh, truly disruptive and will also be a paradigm change in pharmaceutical research. And what I particularly appreciate is that you use the principles of open innovation and I can just encourage you to, uh, to leverage the power of the crowd and uh, the cloud. So congratulations. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> what do you want to, uh, maybe to say a few words? Of you and you want to. Uh, me not to say yeah. words, wouldn't it? So, um, I mean, first of all, thank you very much. It's a genuine surprise. Um, you know, when we looked at all of the uh, competitors during the session today, I was really impressed by the incredible diversity. And as I think, as you said, you know, some issues that many of us are not even aware of. However, for us personally, uh, healthcare is obviously our life. We try to uh, do our best every day to find treatments for patients, you know, who have severe illnesses. And Duchenne's muscular dystrophy is a terrible disease. So, for for those kids, we say thank you. And I'll pass over to Carolyn. One final comment: 
Anyone who personally wants to contact me, I'm running the Chicago Marathon uh, in October for Duchenne's research. <laughs> so I will be posting on Facebook opportunities to contribute. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, thank you very much because this has been, I would say, a two-year journey of trying to convince that um, we can address healthcare uh, in a um, non-for-profit environment. And it actually started um, with finding the right partners within a big pharma company that understood that there was really something there because when we think about rare diseases, there is more than 7,000 of them. And who is going to pay for health of all these people if we develop drugs at the price they are marketed today? So uh, Esperar is really about complementing um, the current way of developing drugs. It's not about replacing it but it's about complementing it so that we can ambition uh, the, r the right to access health uh, for each individual, even if um, they have a very rare disease and it doesn't constitute a big market. And also, <laughs> um, on a personal note, it's, um, it's a personal victory because um, my daughter has a rare disease, uncharacterized, I will not cure her by doing what I do, but she knows that um, she gave me strength uh, to have the courage to push this through with the right people like you and like others in, 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 the, in our company. Congratulations. <laughs> I won't kiss you. <laughs> <laughs> no, you won't kiss me, but uh, Caroline, yes. And well, it's a real pleasure to unite two direct competitors around social innovation. Uh, so, okay, so now we're gonna, we're gonna welcome on stage our fifth, uh, our fifth member of the jury, Doris, who will be representing the Gillet Foundation. She's the director of the Gillet Foundation. Do you want to come on stage and announce who's gonna, who's gonna win the next prize of 10,000 euros? By the way, the first one was also 10,000 euros. Uh. It was. Thank you. Um, first of all, I would like to thank Melchior de Muhalt because he enabled uh, this uh, uh, competition also, and uh, our president, Regis Burus. I was very, personally, very moved. I'm going to cry. <laughs> I'm even more stressed maybe than some candidates because I discovered <laughs> so many incredible stories. I'm really going to try. <laughs> Uh, but I was also very proud to be part of that journey. And um, the mission of the foundation is to promote social responsibility, but especially in the DNA of the family and the foundation, there is the, the, the promotion of human dignity. And the price I'm going to give is really in the heart of that. It's autism at work. Congrats. Congratulations. I start crying with you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. This is Thanks. I lost any word. <laughs> I cannot say anything. So I'm, I really struggle. Maybe you can see in my eyes there are some, some tears now up and coming and rolling because for me it's also a very emotional part. When we kicked off the project last year, it was a tremendous change we already addressed in our organization, internally as well as externally. We launched the project really now one year back, and the media hype we created was outstanding. Outstanding. And that was for me the exact sign that we are on the right track here. We have to do it. However, we had so many circumstances, issues, problems, and believe me, it's not that easy, really, to employ colleagues from the spectrum due to the legal requirements and whatever. It's very often not our fault from the company side, but really there are 
constraints outside of SAP. And so winning this award helps me really to continue with all my heart, with all my speed on this program. Well, well this is hard to top. <laughs> so um, I can just add that, uh, of course, um, I'm very proud in representing the Specialist and the People Foundation here and um, being chosen as the um, runner-up prize. I think it makes a huge difference, and I said this already earlier, um, having SAP as this cooperation partner will really open the doors to other corporations. It will really open the doors to the world um, in terms of making this happen, that we are creating these many uh, jobs for people. And these jobs make a difference to them. And, and I guess you know that autistic people, you always think about these very high potentials that make incredible things, but they're very normal autistic people who really struggle every day. And this makes a very big difference. Thank you very much. Have you something? Just, just very few words. We're humble and fortunate not only to run this uh, great project, we're also humble and fortunate to be along those 15 other projects who have been here with us at Samat. And it's an unbelievable honor that we've been picked for this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. So now the time has come to welcome uh, the great winner. Uh, I would like to, to welcome to, to, to award this winner, Christopher, on stage. Thank you, Christopher. A very special thank for you know allowing this. I think that you know it's because you you trusted us that it it happened, and and, and, and obviously uh, it was uh, also a way to engage other other partners. But I know that it's really important for you. Uh, to announce. Yeah, who's thank you very much. Okay. Actually, I have only one regret. I think we should have had 15 prizes for all of you because you all presented incredible projects. And I ask the people in the audience who came to the Zermatt Summit, some of them are involved in venture capital, some others in finance, that please to see if you can help out some of these uh, incredible social entrepreneurs. So obviously our goal is to put, to put the human back in the center of globalization. And so all, m many of these projects, so most of them were really doing that. Uh, but like in the, uh, in the famous uh, contest, there's always one winner. And so the suspense is, uh, the winner is Annabella, yeah. social school. <laughs> speak very shortly to leave the, the to you, even though you're, we're all a little bit uh, emotional. Uh, th thanks to this project, we really make changing the lives of women. Uh, and what is really interesting with this uh, project, it can be scaled up in Spain, but also in other countries. And also, I think we should highlight Danone, who is behind also this collaboration. Danone is, you know, very innovative in the field of um, social responsibility. Uh, in the education field, and they have, I think, ecosystem fund, which is also behind this, which is really helping social entrepreneurs, which brings, brings social and economic value. So, congratulations again. Well, Annabella has told me I have to talk first, <laughs> because then we are going to cry, <laughs> I assure you. So, I would like to thank you for the award. For us, it's very, like, really, a proud for us because we have been working so hard for this project and I tell you that everything that could go wrong went wrong. So we are really happy to be here, to have been successful. We really want to escalate it to everywhere in the world because this is really an issue that we have to address. And so I would like to thank Ana Bellam. She has changed my life. She, the day I met her, you know, she made me see the world from another perspective. And I also expect you from the Cermat Summit to see the world in a different way with so many talent in here. First, 
I want to thank Ashoka because they were the, fir the first um, entity that believed in me, that I was not a problem, I can change the world. Not only me, all women and everybody can be a chain maker. Second, I want to thank the jury <laughs> because mm, it's very difficult to, to believe in a project involving domestic violence. So you are very brave. And I want to thank Danone because it was the first company, the pioneer company in Spain, to look at us like an asset, not like a problem. We can contribute to the social and economic growth of companies. We are not the problem, we are part of the solution. And I want to thank <laughs> Esther. I want to thank Esther because this co-creation project is here today because she believed in me and because she convinced everybody in Danone. And maybe if she was not there, we cannot make this great social change in Spain that abuse women, people don't see us like a victim, they see us like chain makers. And this is also thanks to you. And thanks to all of you for all your projects. You really inspire us. And we really believe that we all together can create a better world. Thank you. Thank you. I think that this is a very important takeaway. Um, when we talk about co-creation, most of the time we talk about organizations, social enterprises, businesses, but this is actually a question of people and a question of connecting people, who people who actually uh, get together in order to tackle a social issue. It's not whether they come from a social enterprise or from a business. This is what they share in terms of values, in terms of goals, in terms of achieving something which is bigger than you know, the sum of the part. And I think you could probably feel it you know, on stage for the, the partners. We are, I think we are glad and we are really privileged at Ashoka to be, uh, to be part of this uh, great community. And again, I would like to... Uh, to congratulate everyone, all the, the, the winners. I agree with Christopher that we need to fix uh, this and, and next year to have something different, but uh, ho hopefully you will make connections, you will, uh, you will uh, have some takeaways. I, I learned this morning that some of you have already um, decided to work together to launch new things, so this is the power of collaboration. And when you bring together change makers, you can be sure that there is always something uh, coming out of it. So um, a huge thank you to, to everyone. The time has come now to collect, uh, you have collected and we have seen your evaluation form in order to see who is the winner uh, for, for, for the, 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 the public prize. And in order to introduce this winner, I would like to welcome Olivier on stage. Um, for those who, who are from Switzerland, you have probably witnessed that Ashoka has been taking off in the last year or so, and it's definitely uh, thanks to Olivier's work and commitment that, that, we are, that we are developing. So a huge thank you to you, and over to you to announce who has been chosen. Thank you, Arnaud. So I will not make a long speech because basically it is your prize, but uh, uh, you awarded Annabella and uh. Danon again. <laughs> Let me let me tell let me tell you just that there were like so not so many differences between all the results. So uh, I'd like uh, as well to to have a great uh, applause all for all the candidates again. That uh, made a great speech. This award and the other award is not for us. It's for all the abused women right now they are like in prison and if we all speak out we will let them start a happy life thank you stay here i would like to maybe to uh, ask the the all the winners you know from the special mention and the others to come on stage we'd like also to have a picture of you guys um with the with the jury members if that's possible is it 
Do you, do you want? Doris, Tobias, Matthias, and everyone actually wants to come on stage, you can come. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's nice. <laughs> We need to do quite fast because we're a bit short of time uh, because of the restaurant tonight. So huge congrats again. And And if you allow me 30 seconds, uh, just just two things. One is just would like to, to say a huge big thank you. Uh, no, no, come here, Anna Maria, because you know behind these huge organizations there are people, and I would like to to, to big round of applause for Anna Maria who has been leading this project. Obviously, uh, with the, the rest of the team, and, and thank you to, to all uh, the interns, the volunteers, etc. It's, it's great to, to be working with you, obviously with, with Stephanie as well. This is just the beginning. This is was just you know one thing, one time thing. Uh, actually, what we are learning, Stephanie told you about the trends, etc., will be documented uh, through the partnership with uh, with uh, various universities and schools. So we have St. Gallen, we have HEG Fribourg, we have HEC Lausanne, who will be actually putting students and uh, professors in order to uh, to make business cases of all those all those uh, stories, so that that can be th taught at school and that can hopefully inspire uh, more and more students. And hopefully, this program with the universities will will grow. So, just wanted to highlight this because it's not just a competition. This is a, a long-term project that hopefully will inspire more and more co-creators to to join the movement. So, thank you to all, and uh, I think now it's time to go to the dinner. Thank you.